My opponent tonight is a former Rhodes Scholar, the former mayor of Newark, and the current senator from New Jersey, Senator Cory Booker. Good to, see you. Good, to see, Good you, see you. Good to see you. Good to see you too, George. Welcome. I'd like to thank you for coming. I'd also like to thank Aiden for uh, letting us use his room here. This is a pretty great room. I'm a big fan of trains. You know where you're going with the train. <laughs> yes, yes. You've got to stay on track in life. It's a very good metaphor. Exactly. Yes. I want to stay on track. Corey. Yes. we got some kids here. Yes. There's a big march coming up. Can you, just, can you just tell them that this is a fad and it's time to move on? What do you think about this march? Well, two things. One is you have to understand that change has never in history come from Washington. It's come to Washington. Strom Thurmond didn't just one day say, hey, I think those black folks should have some civil rights. No, it was people that marched and demonstrated and brought change to Washington. What they're doing is not only consistent with history, it's actually been the only pathway that real meaningful change has been made is through the activism of young Americans. Because like you're supporting these kids. Have they, have they bullied you? Um, <laughs> is this what I'm seeing right now? Um, Are you going to be smoking some doobies out by the park? I, I, cool I, I think that what these guys are doing is leading by example. They're, they're letting uh, adults know you guys haven't been able to make change. We have a horrific reality where every day in America dozens of people are dying uh, due to gun violence and that this has to stop. You guys haven't stopped it, so we're going to take the helm and lead the change. Well, what, what's, what's adults' problems? I mean, I know I'm fine. I got what I, I want. Change not happening, status quo, <laughs> thumbs up. But you're an adult, you're an adult in a position of power. Why isn't change happening from your end? Well, I, first of all, it's very frustrating. I know, I know what captures a lot of attention is often the uh, mass shootings, these awful, awful realities. But every day in America, uh, we have uh, lots of shootings in communities like mine. I, I've had two shootings uh, on my block in the last year. Last, most recently, last week, uh, Shahad Smith was killed by an automatic weapon uh, at the top of where I, the block of where I live. I live in an inner city, low-income community. And so th this is hurtful that we have not been able to make change. And a lot of the times, the people in power uh, often don't represent the views, uh, Republican or Democrat, of the majority of their citizens. And so this is the time where the people want change. They want common sense gun safety measures to be done. It, the, the, but the people in power aren't doing anything. And I think what these young people are going to show, what the truth in any democracy is, that the power of the people is greater than the people in power. You mentioned uh, mass shootings. And this movement seems to be a response to school shootings. But mass shootings are only 3% of the gun deaths in America in 2017. Is this a misguided movement? Are they focusing on the wrong things? No. I, in fact, I've heard the, the incredible eloquence by uh, a lot of the young people around the country, young people from Parkland, even young people in New Jersey who've been saying, hey, look, we're going to use this moment to shine a light on the fact that we have in many poor communities and communities of color um, that deaths are happening every day and, and for some reason nobody's paying attention. Because again, this is not a problem that we can't do something about. We have the power to make change. And so what this is a question of not is can we, is but do we have the collective will? And I think what they're doing is waking up the moral imagination of this country, uh, uh, pointing to the moral urgency, and they're determined to keep it going. Now, you're talking a lot about people coming together, and this yeah. is just what you do. You love to talk about that. Yeah. Wayne LaPierre talked about you and your European socialism when it comes to, <laughs> to guns. Yes. Do you just want everybody to share one gun? Is that your ultimate vision um, for the, America? You know, when our uh, founders came together and they ended the Declaration of Independence with these noble words that if this country's going to work, we must mutually pledge to each other, you know, they said our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. This is a country, yeah, of rugged individualism and uh, it's a country of self-reliance, but we also have proven to humanity you know, rugged individualism didn't get us to the moon, that when we come together and work together and partner, we can do things that are beyond the imagination of our ancestors. You really think we went to the moon? <laughs> <laughs> I hate to do this because this is my show, but I have children here and apparently they have questions. So if you don't mind, uh, there's some questions. That you're give, you're giving over some of your uh, you know, I'm your a nice platform. Guy. Just I, because I'm an adult and I think we should talk down to children <laughs> doesn't mean I'm always going to talk down I was down wondering to about people. this positioning. You put them on the floor well, and I, you had us lord above the young people. This <laughs> is just functionally the best position. All right? okay. I'm, don't let the metaphor play out that I'm literally talking down to children yeah, okay. to make you think that that's what I want uh, to do. All right. All right. Well, even though they're lower than us, we, well, let's look up to them and, and, and their stature. So come on. Mr. Booker, thank you for talking to me today. The Democratic Party has helped my movement by giving us a platform, and we've been speaking a lot about change. When will you actually propose any change? Right. Well, I'm hopeful that this is going to this election in November is going to be a referendum, and I'm, I don't want it to be a partisan election. This is not a simply about uh, left or right or Republican or Democrat. It's to me, it's about right or wrong. 
And if you are a person standing up and blocking, if you're in Congress right now and you're blocking what 90% of Americans want, some of these common sense things, and you need to be voted out of office uh, because you are being complicit, our inaction is being complicit in the continued violence. My favorite question. You've talked about a lot of stuff I have no idea about and it really didn't stick. So I'd like you to tell me something I already know. Well, I think you know uh, that the, the, the long arc of history bends towards justice. We are a country that's gotten better and better and better. Is that, that where it goes? It does. It absolutely does. But it doesn't bend automatically. We've got to be the benders. And so the right side of history right now is finding the common ground and doing those things that will make America safer. Yeah, I totally knew that. All right. <laughs> Senator Cory Booker.